Hi, I'm Mike Spack. I'm a professional race car driver and I'm an instructor with Ford's Driving Skills for Life program. Today I'm going to take a couple minutes of your time to teach you how to be a safer driver out on the road. Talk to you soon. Now, first off, a lot of people think that getting taught by a professional race car driver is just going to teach them how to drive fast, and that's not what it's about. What we do in a race car is we earn a living, so when we're sitting behind that wheel, we're actually getting paid to provide a service. And that service means that we have to be safe in the car, we can't crash it, and we have to operate it at its limit without going over. Now, as it turns out, that requires a certain skill set. You got to be able to do certain things well. Most people, when they think about a professional race car driver, they just think of somebody that's really, really brave and really, really strong. And that's not always true. It's definitely not true as far as I'm concerned. I'm definitely not brave and I'm certainly not strong, but I can drive a race car and I've won in them before. And it has a lot to do with what it is that I think about. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at the four main things that we feel that uh, ultimately make a good driver. First off, you gotta be able to concentrate. You gotta think about what it is that you're doing while you're behind the wheel of that car and you got to think about what's going on around you. Now in a race car it's easy to do that. The reason it's easy is because you're going fast, you're in a competitive environment and frankly you're getting paid to be there so you better concentrate and do a good job. But on the street it's not so easy. What happens to people is they get bored and when people get bored on the street they do things to fill their time. We all know what people do. They do little things like they talk with friends, listen to the radio, all those little things that take their attention away from the road. Big thing for us that we all know is bad is texting. You got a, oh, you got a keyboard phone? Oh, yeah. yeah, just like one second, take your eye off the road and just boom. Did you? It doesn't take, uh, there you go. Boom. Here's another cone. Just, just takes a second to just, you know, take your mind yeah, off, wait. off concentrating on driving, you know. And then. Boy, the one in the center. Oh. Uh oh. <laughs> just what a handful is that. Oh, I know. Oh, just, just holding the steering wheel with one hand, and then we'll He's stop. Gonna we're gonna, gonna, we're gonna try, try backing up. Back. Try backing back up. up. Yeah. Okay. Get that cone out from underneath the car. There you go. Yeah, but uh, another student was saying, you know, that it's, oh, it's easier to text when you're going down the highway because you're not turning. But just think, like, how fast we were going. We were only going, what, five miles an hour? Yeah. And you just blink for a second, and then we hit a cone. But uh, if you're going down the highway and you looked at your phone for two seconds, like, figure out how far you traveled, you know? So we know concentration's important. Another thing is car feel. Let's check out this car and I'll show you what I'm talking about. When we talk about car feel, I'm not really talking about touching the car. I'm talking about sensing when the car is happy and when the car is not happy. Now, as it turns out, the only way a car can really communicate to you is through slides. And that usually happens when that area between the tire and the road doesn't provide what we call friction. Look, the only way that a car can do anything, things like accelerate or brake or turn, is through friction. And the only friction that we're talking about is that area, like we said before, between the tire and the road. We call it the contact patch. Now that area can get compromised by a lot of things. One is you could just be asking it to do too much work. Hammering the gas too hard, hammering the brake too hard, trying to turn too fast. But there are other things that can affect it as well. For example, on this nice dry sunny day, the tarmac has lots of grip to it and there's nothing between the tire and the road. But on a rainy day or a day where there's ice or snow on the road, that compromises how much grip there is. Okay, that's really great. What does it mean to you? Well, it means to you is that the car can't do the work that you wanted it to do before. It can't slow down as well, it can't turn as well, and it can't accelerate as well. Now, drivers that have good car feel, they know when that tire can and can't do the work. And one good thing about tires, in terms of how they work with cars, is that they're great communicators. They'll tell you when things are good or bad, but if you can't feel it, you won't know. So, what is the car trying to tell you? Well, when it starts to slide, either the back of the car or the front of the car, that's just car talk, it's car speak. It's just letting you know that you're doing something in the car that's exceeding what we call the coefficient of friction, grip. 
the car can't do the work anymore. So now it's sliding. When a car slides, most people think of the back of the car sliding. And we focus on that a lot in the Driving Skills for Life program. What Ford's done is they provided us with two brand new 2011 Ford Mustangs. And we put all of our students in these cars. What we actually do is we lift the back of the car off the ground slightly so the tire doesn't touch as well. And now when that driver goes and makes a big old turn, the back of the car is gonna to start to slide. We call that oversteer. Not only do we let you feel it, but then we let you control it. This is our little course here. You see those little cones here on the left side? Mm -hmm. Visualize those as being the sidewalk. You don't want to drive on top of the sidewalk. You don't want to clip your front tire with the sidewalk because that can cause you to spin, okay? So manage your space, leave some area between those cones and yourself. Don't hit the cones, okay? You want to start turning right about here, mm -hmm. all right? If you have enough momentum, the car will start to slide. The back end will break loose. And then when that happens, what do you do? Well, you'll, you'll be off the gas, off the brake, going into the corner. Mm -hmm. You turn in and then the car breaks loose. What do you do when the car breaks loose? You turn into the slide, okay? Have you guys seen the movie Cars, the cartoon? Mm -hmm. Remember, there's a whole segment about this in that movie, remember? Mm -hmm. What part is it? Tell me. It's um, where he's like... Okay, Lightning McQueen <laughs> couldn't figure out that to go left, he needed to turn right. But mm -hmm. that only applies while you're sliding. Okay, and then to go right, you need to turn left. Okay, and I'll show you now what's happening. Okay, you turn here like you would on the street, right about here, you start getting on the gas, building momentum, go straight, turn in like you would on the street, car breaks loose, you steer into the slide. That is That's so how cool. you recover. Okay, okay. no that big deal. Cool. You're first. No brake, no gas, steer into the slide. You got it, you did it, you did it. All right, <laughs> perfect. Let's do it again. It's easy, huh? No. <laughs> and now, you know that's happening in a controlled environment. That kind of stuff will catch you by surprise on the road, okay? It, it, when it's wet out and all that. Okay, make the turn, steer into the slide. Beautiful job. Okay, go, go, one more time. Here we go. It's simple, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Okay, exit wide, build momentum. Build momentum, okay, that's good. Turn in, catch your slide. Catch it, catch it, catch it. Beautiful. So we know that concentration is super important. We also know that car feel is really, really important. The next big thing is visual technique. I'm not talking about just looking. I'm talking about looking where you want to go, which is a little bit different than what your folks might have told you. When I was little, my dad always told me, look where you're going, look where you're going. Well, as it turned out, there was a wall right in front of me, and I looked at it, I walked right into it. So I tried to look where I wanted to be next, and that's super key in a car. As it turns out, that power of visual technique is way, way more intense than you might think. When a car starts to slide, like we were talking earlier with car feel, when a car starts to slide, most people begin to panic. The reason that panic is important is because when you panic, you become the single greatest athlete that you're ever gonna be. The reason that that's important is because your hands and feet during panic are slaves to these bad boys, your eyes. Wherever your eyes look, your hands and feet will direct the car in that exact direction. And as it turns out, that can be a very, very powerful thing. Let me give you a good example. We read in the newspaper that somebody hit a telephone pole in a car, and we think to ourselves, man, that, that's gotta be a pretty gosh darn bad driver. I mean, a telephone pole is only three and a half feet wide. Some states, it's only a foot and a half wide. I mean, how could you honestly pick out a target like a telephone pole to hit it? But then we break down that accident scene and we see that there's skid marks 300 feet long that go right smack dab right at that telephone pole. And we realize that those skid marks are 300 feet long. That means that car must have been going 60 miles an hour before that driver started to slide the car. And because they go straight at that telephone pole, that means that driver took a sliding car, never lost control of it. Not only that, but they hit that foot and a half wide piece of real estate. That's incredible car control, and that's remarkable precision. The problem is they hit the pole. That's bad. And the reason they did it is because they stared right at it. 
so let's just drive around the cones, <clears throat> drive, get used to where you're driving, practice your vision. If you don't, if you, there you go. If you don't look ahead, then you don't, you can't, your brain doesn't know what to do with the wheel. Okay, so don't go, don't get so tight to the sidewalk. There you go. Now turn. There you go. Okay. You're, well, you were looking at it. That's why you're gonna hit it. If you're not, you, you know it's there already. So look ahead and, and take the car where it needs to go. Okay. Don't let the, co the that cone t uh, bring well, you towards. Do a small skid this okay. Let's we'll build momentum. Stay wide. Stay wide. Don't turn yet. Okay. Now turn. 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 Look ahead. You, there you go. Okay. And and you didn't. You were going a little bit wide with the turn. You weren't looking ahead. Okay. okay. You were looking at the cone. Okay. Gas. 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 Faster. 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 Hard right, hard right. There you go, that's a start. Now let's get back to that texting thing with distractions. We know that distractions are bad. If you can't concentrate in the car, you're going to miss things. If you miss things, there's going to be a problem. Now it might not be apparent right away. In fact, with many distractions, people find that it's not so bad for them most of the time. And that kind of leads them into this false sense of security. They really do begin to believe that they can text and do all kinds of other things while they're driving and never have a problem. The plain fact of the matter, folks, is that you can't concentrate on two things at 100%. You can't concentrate on driving at 100% and concentrate on texting at 100%. Something is going to get lost in the translation. Okay? If you miss something in the text, you just text a bad word. No big deal. A little embarrassed, but not a biggie. On the other hand, if you miss something in the driving, now you're going to end up changing insurance cards. That's not such a good thing. So you've got to make sure that you cut those distractions down to the, to the minimum possible. All right, so you think you already know everything about driving? Sure, I've given you some good tips, but there's always more to learn. One way you could do it is to use the tools that you can find on Ford's Driving Skills for Life website. It's an easy address, www.drivingskillsforlife.com. Also, in that website, there's an academy that you can take. Bunch of questions that ask you all about different aspects of driving. Just be safe out on the road. To us, that's the most important thing. <laughs>